How's it going guys? My name is Charlie. I've got my girlfriend Lauren behind the camera. And today we're going to give you a tour of our Ford Transit Mark 7 Stealth Camper Van. So as you can see, there's a few nicks and bumps in the side of the van. It is an old work van, gives it that stealth look. No one can notice us, hopefully, when we're outside camping. It's a bit of a windy day in the UK. We haven't picked the best day today, so let's jump inside. Welcome to the crib, the semi-crib. We float between this van and our narrowboat. We've had the van for about a year and a half now. Been doing plenty of trips around the UK that you can head back and watch. I will confess right now, this is a very basic build. It was semi-converted from the guy I bought it from. So he'd done a lot of the woodwork, but there was no electricity, there was no heater. It was pretty bare minimum. But the main thing was the frame and the bed that you can see was already in place. So starting off with our mini kitchen, we've got two gas hogs. I'll open up the bottom and you can see exactly what it looks like underneath. So we've got two 3.9 kilogram gas bottles that we switch over when they run out. We've got our fresh water that needs topping up at the minute, our little fold down bin, dustpan and brush, and the gray water. I've got no outlet or water tanks underneath, so we carry a three of these, and the gray water, we have to keep an eye on that as we're traveling and keep emptying that as we go. We've got our cutlery drawer. We have to squeeze everything into this, but we're pretty organized. It's probably gonna be one of the most OCD, well-organized vans that you'll find. We've got all the basic utensils in there, and Lauren cooks up some pretty tasty meals. I think our subscribers will agree. <laughs> We've got a little sink and I would have liked to expand it even more but it's just something we didn't get around to. When we bought the van, the guy had installed a steel tap with a foot pump, which wasn't great for us. So we installed a water pump. We've got the main switchboard there, which I'll explain all the electrics in a minute. But we've got our lights, our pump and our heater. And Lauren is going to demonstrate, hopefully the water's working. There we go. <laughs> what we've done is we've ran the lines all the way back along drilled a hole in the back of the cupboard. The water pump has been bolted to the back there. So we've got the inlet pulling out of this fresh water. It goes up through the pipes and straight up into the tap. So that's the kitchen setup. As I mentioned, very basic, but it works for us. We're used to the similar setup in the narrowboat, just a little bit bigger. So we're very minimalistic. Overhead storage, we've got our kettle. We normally keep our dry foods up here. Plates and bowls, typical camper. And a little tip, we put this rubber matting in so that it doesn't slide around too much when we're on the move. We've got a little clip on the side, stops it from opening as we go. So to finish off the kitchen, <laughs> as if we've got separate rooms in the van, we've got a little spice rack, a towel holder, and up here, apart from Lauren's makeup mirror, is our overhead storage. So we've got our pots and pans, our washing up stuff, we've got a couple of sleeping bags, and our bathroom box. Of course, a first aid kit is always a necessity. And again, little tip, carpeted this it was bare metal one to insulate it a tiny bit but mainly to stop it sliding around and making a racket while we're driving oh and almost forgot <laughs> our little bean shelf our big bean shelf which is normally full of baked beans tinned goods we're a bit empty at the minute but we've got a couple of tins of soup just in case we need something so behind this big wooden door that we leave our veg bag on is where you will find the isolation switch to our leisure battery so the main battery sits underneath the driver's seat and we installed an isolation switch to a leisure battery that is strapped in and this connects all the electrics to the back of the switchboard and when we want to charge it we connect them drive it charges up the leisure battery and when we pull up to camp for the night we disconnect it so that when that runs out if it runs out it hasn't run out yet it's not draining off our main battery and as you can imagine that is pretty crucial so it's one thing we have to remember every time okay moving up into the main living quarters First up, we've got our Chinese diesel heater controls. The diesel heater is located in the boot, which I'll show you in a little while, but the air pumps out of here and it does get very, very warm. So that's crucial. It, all the wires are hidden away, but it's uh, it's been a big upgrade to our van experience. This is just my nan's old poof. When she passed away, is the one thing I wanted to keep. It's a little memory of uh, where I used to sit with her when I was a child. So we got the whole thing reconstructed, put a new zip on it and bolted out the fillings. And that's just a little memoir when we want to put our feet up or somewhere to sit. But to be honest, it normally just gets in the way. Sorry, Nan. So before I show you the full extent of the seating area, it was an L shape. The guy had previously installed that kind of setup, but we chopped it down the middle purely because we wanted an extendable table. And then we also built it so that when the table's not in use, 
it drops down, sits on this ledge, and we've still got the L-shaped sofa. While I'm at it, you might as well come and see what happens in the boot. It's a bit of a, an organized mess. We've got our two electric bikes. Let me chuck them out of the way. We actually only just got these recently. Took them for a little test ride last week, and they're actually so good. Look at this. They fold out, clip together, and the handlebars just pop up like that. So not only are they foldable, they're electric, they're from a company called Michael. Yeah, nice little addition to the van. I'll come back to the boot and talk you through that in a minute. As you can see, huge storage space thanks to the lifted height of the bed. But what we need is the table leg and the table top itself. So obviously this was a bit of a bitch when we were laying the floor in, but it was all worth it to have somewhere to sit and eat our dinners come evening time and also somewhere to work when we're on the road. If we're having a work day, we often set this up. And then underneath what we've done, <laughs> it's a bit of a mess, but it does the job and we rarely use this to be honest. Almost like <laughs> a little dog bed, <laughs> which slots in there. Now we're just missing a Pomeranian. Laura keeps hustling me for our Pomeranian, so maybe <laughs> that's the secret reason it was built like that. <laughs> <laughs> and then we've got the extra bit of fabric in the boot, so that if we ever do want the L-shaped sofa back, or we have our nephews over, they need somewhere to sleep, We've got this as a setup. And then obviously with a tiny space, you have to make the most of every little compartment. So under here is our main storage. We've got a couple of hot water bottles under there from before we had our heater. And that is where we normally chuck our cases and clothes if we're going on a short or long adventure. And then over this side, we have got almighty porta potty. We get a lot, a lot of questions. Look at that. It just fits. Obviously measured that precisely. We get a lot of questions about this particular porta potty. This is the smallest one available on the market. It is the Thetford Porta Potty 335. So although it doesn't last long when we're on the road, we do have to find campsites and places to empty it every few days. It is the smallest and most compact one you can find. Just quickly before we forget, we have got the 240 mains as well, which we haven't got any type of inverters or solar panels that charge these up. Uh, these only run when we plug in and hook up on a campsite, but I'll show you in the cabin in a little while, we've got like a little portable inverter that we can charge stuff with while we're driving. And finally, our adaptable bed. One thing I would advise if you're looking at beds is a big mistake we made. We bought a Ford Transit because of the layout and because of the size. This is a high top mid wheelbase. The bed is very narrow. The walls are narrow. So if I'm in the van on my own, I can just about fit diagonally and have a restless night's sleep. But the beauty with this is the guy that built it made it out of an old bunk bed and the slats pull out using this little cog to make not a full size double, but more or less a proper double bed. So we've got our extra bit of material, <laughs> which is not ideal to make up every night when we're on the road, but when you extend it and put a bit of effort in, it certainly makes for a comfier night's sleep. We've got these legs that hook into the bottom of the frame, like so, and then the step means that we have got plenty of space for chilling in the evenings. So that's about it from the inside, but as you can imagine, when we shut all the doors and tuck up, get the heater on at night time, it is completely stealth. No one would know we're in here and it's so warm and super cozy. One thing I haven't mentioned actually, the insulation, I think it's 100 mil thick as well as in the floor. And because we've got the front completely guarded off with that main door, there's no way really for the cold to creep in. And to make it even cozier. <laughs> this was Lauren's idea. We've got the curtain. Complete, when we tuck it in, complete privacy. Done out. <laughs> Shout out Dunhelm. I've taken the camera, so Lauren wants to show you a few things. Excuse the Teletubby look, but... <laughs> Sleeping bag. A great tip is to get one of these bags for your fruit and veg, because it allows it to breathe, so it's not going mouldy. And if you just put a hook anywhere in your van, you've got a hanging fruit bowl. One last thing to show you in here, aside from the decorations, is obviously the roof vent. Lots of people have electric ones, we just got a very basic one that was already installed on the van. The old spinny let the wind in one. The maker of that is a Fiamma, for anyone that's interested. We open that up normally when we're cooking or if it gets too hot in here in the summer. And before anyone jumps on me, we've got our carbon monoxide alarm up here too. And this is actually where the guy previously had a wood burner installed. It was beautiful, but we're not going on any ski holidays anytime soon and it took up quite a lot of space here. It also made the van super heavy. So we're allowed this up to three and a half ton and the fireplace alone was pretty heavy. So the fact that we would probably never use it, it would have just dragged the van along and increased the fuel consumption. So we plated over the chimney hole and made it look like a little fake 
air vent. And although it's still quite a blank canvas, we managed to get a couple of decorations up. We've got my favourite photo of the van up there in the Lake District. We've got a little line art of me and Lauren in front of the van there in Scotland that someone kindly made for us and sent over through Instagram. We also stole these from the narrowboat Christmas decorations to give a bit of a vibe in here. And we've got the complete boho look from another subscriber that very kindly made these macrames to go across the back doors. So I'll quickly take you around, talk you through the boot. So as you saw earlier, we've got the table and the outside dining setup strapped in here to stop it from wriggling all over the place while we're driving. We've got our electric cables, our set of chocks, our jump start kit, just in case. And Lauren loves a game of bowls. We've got our two spare jerry cans full of water normally 25 litres each so 25 50 75 litres we carry in total wellies always a good thing to keep in a camper van and our little 12 volt fridge from halfords which is always good because as you probably noticed in the main part of the van we don't have a fridge we don't eat a lot of dairy anyway so this is handy if we ever do have anything when we're on the road you can plug that into the cigarette lighter in the front we also have a cigarette lighter on our switch panel so we can chuck that on and it kind of just ticks over and keeps things pretty chill overnight. We've got our storage box full of goodies. <laughs> Priorities. Lauren's got our wine glasses. We've got citronella, hat, sun cream, all that good stuff that you always need to carry when you're traveling around. Another thing you probably notice is we don't have a place to shower. So in here, it's literally just broken. We were using it the other day and it broke, but we had a USB chargeable shower. You simply drop the bottom pump in a bucket of water, hit the button, and it comes out just like a normal shower. They're honestly so good and they're charged via USB. And the setup we did have, if we ever needed to use it, I think we used it once in Scotland with Will, is you can hook it on the back here. We had a curtain pole that goes across the back. Bucket of water, shower, and this was like our little outdoor shower. Apart from that, normally when we're in the van, we do like three days on the road. If we find rivers or lakes, we normally jump in, have a swim, or we have a little pop-up bucket and give ourselves a strip wash. And then after three days, we normally jump on a campsite anyway because it's time to enter the toilet, refill the water, and have a decent hot powered shower. Last thing in the boot is the diesel heater that I was talking about. If you jump on eBay, Chinese diesel heater. I made a whole video where we went up to Liverpool and installed it. Fill this up with diesel. The heater is under here that we've actually boxed off just so that we can chuck stuff on top of it. But this throws air out the back and obviously pumps all the hot air into the main compartment of the van. There's a bit more to it than that. There's a little exhaust and a filter that has to go through and under the van and back out. But absolute godsend would not be able to live in our van without it now. And one of the great things about them as well is they literally use hardly any diesel. So if you're watching this, you probably already know this information if you're into vans. But if you're thinking about heating in your van, definitely recommend a Chinese diesel heater. I should probably mention, this is just regular diesel. We get it from the petrol station, chuck your pump in. I think this costs like 10 pound to fill up, or you can also run it on red diesel if you know someone that's got a farm and uses tractors. Nearly forgot our bag of bags. We've literally got a bag full of tote bags because when you're on the road, you just always need something to carry things with. And we collect them. Yeah, we do actually, yeah. <laughs> We've got another bag of bags on our narrow boat. So if you ever see a tote bag out about, grab it and keep it for us. And as you can see from the outside, I think you'd agree it's pretty stealth. The only thing really that would ever give it away, which you're never going to notice, is our plug-in for the outside. So that's where we plug in for the mains if we're ever on site. But let's be honest, no one's going to take notice of that. I'll give you a quick run through in the cabin, just in case you're interested. As I mentioned, it's a very basic van build. This is pretty old school, but when you're driving, this plugs into your cigarette lighter and it gives you 240 power as you're driving. So if we ever need to charge our laptops on the go, uh, camera batteries, anything major, we rely on that. And that also can be used on our little switch panel board in the back there. I mean, we like the dash. It's 10 years old. It's a 2012 version of the Mark 7. So it's not super up to date. It's got no air con, it's got no mod cons, but it's got a little aux lead up here so we can play our music while we're on the road. And in our glove box, we've got all sorts. We've done Scotland and the NC500 last year, so still got our hair, net, hair nets or head nets? Head nets. Head nets to keep the mozzies away. Torches for campsites at night times. What else we got in there? Baby wipes, always need baby wipes. Skin so soft uh, for the midges in Scotland. You should just keep one of these in your van at all times. It's the best thing to get rid of midges, bugs, anything when you're camping. Avon skin so soft. It's not, it shouldn't look like that. It should look like oil, but because it's so cold, it's frozen over. <laughs> Hand sunny. Hand sunny. Little book that I made Charlie. Oh, it's a bit ruined. Oh no, <laughs> Charlie. Uh, that's a spare switch for the oh. isolation switch, yep. just in case we ever lose one. And we've got an extra little compartment here. We just stock our wires in there. Oh, another thing to mention, as you can see, this is all carpeted. 
So from the front, again, for the stealth look, it is a complete workman's van. If you look in from the front, you'll see nothing that gives away uh, that it's a camper van on the inside. One last thing that we've got to show you is... <laughs> hey, come on! Always the joker. Should we jump in the back and sign out? Let's do it. Also, under here, next to our leisure battery, is where I keep our sticker box. I know stickers are a big part of the van life community. We've got three different ones. We've got the Charlie and Lauren airplane travel ones, Charlie and Lauren van life, which is probably what you guys are gonna be interested in. And we've got the Charlie and Lauren narrowboat stickers. So if you're into the whole sticker collecting game, make sure to jump on and grab one from our website. Or if you just wanna support us, we really appreciate it and we love seeing where in the world our stickers get to. So that about rounds up the van tour. Hope you've enjoyed it. As I mentioned just then, if you have any comments, any questions, drop them down below. We'll get back to you. Uh, thanks so much for your help, Lauren. Also, I know the top question is probably going to be how much did it cost and how much did the renovation cost? I'm going to break it all down in the next video. I've got my notes full of the stuff from when we'd done the renovation almost two years ago. And I promise the next video that goes out after this is going to be a complete breakdown of the finances. Also, if you're a fan of tiny living, van life, narrow boats, anything of the sort, make sure to jump onto our channel, check out all the previous playlists. We've got heaps of content from the last couple of years. Like, comment, subscribe. Make sure you drop us a like, leave us a comment and subscribe to the channel because no doubt we'll be getting out in the Ford Transit camper this summer, hitting a lot of the UK and Europe. So I look forward to seeing you there. Catch you on the next one, guys.